there were previous speakers looking at it from the point of view of a nursery parent. Very important. Last year, the Guardian newspaper did some research. They went to teachers and they said to teachers, what should parents be looking at when looking at a school? So this is coming from teachers. It's not my words. It's not my colleagues in Dubai words. This is from teachers all around the world saying what you parents should look for when choosing a school. Number one, exam results. Hugely important. Why on earth do you invest in your children? Exam results. But there is a bigger picture. There's more to your children than English, math, science and French. You've got art. What did your children start school at? What a difference has the school made to your child? Ask the school that. Every school should have data. Every school should be able to tell you what difference they've made to their children. Next thing, let's go and visit the school. Yes, look at the website, look at the publicity materials, look at any other information you can get, talk to other parents, but go and visit. Now many schools like ours, we do open days, formal days where you're invited in, but make a random appointment. Go and choose a time that suits you to go and visit the school. And when you go around the school, ask all the questions. Ask them, are there any areas off limits? Oh, there I can't. And if they say yes, go and ask to see them. Go and see the school when the children are about. Go at lunchtime. Go at break time. Look at the way the children interact. Are they happy? Are they dealing nicely with each other? Consider these things. Can you imagine your child in this school? Next thing, something very close to my heart. Some do. How involved is the head teacher in the leading of that school and the teaching in that school? Does the head have a teaching commitment? I hope so. Talk to the pupils. Ask the pupils what they think of school. Children are the most honest customers. Ask the children what would they do to improve the school. That's a CBT way of saying what's not working. So ask the children what would they do to improve. Can you imagine your child sat there in that classroom in this particular time? Have a think about that. Next, find out about staff burden. So we know in this environment it's pretty hard Get away from the teachers to come to the right now. The great thing about having a gem school is teachers around the world want to work for us. So actually, we don't have a problem with getting started in the area. Last week, I received a quick email from the teachers around the world who people want to come here. So have a look at what the turn of the staff is. Many schools operate in one year contracts. We offer minimum of two. We know you can get one in the city. Another great question. How many of the staff send their own children to that school? Now, if the staff have children of the right age, they could go to the school. Why aren't they sending them there? So find out how many of the teachers and the admin staff have children of school age and how many of them can I have some thank you? And how many of them send their children to the school? very proud of the fact that my own son has been to every single school I've taught him and I'm very proud of the schools that I have taught him myself. So have a look at these things. Once we get the technology back in order, we'll see what happens. Speak to your child. When your child does a taste today, ask them about it. Get your child in that school for a day. See if the schools you plan to do that. We are. We're happy having your children coming in for a day. Walking around the school, coming into our lessons, spending time with our teachers. See what your child thinks of the school. Because they're the ones ultimately that have the choice. I love this question. This is not my question, this came from teachers around the world. Who's that marking? Teachers tend to not really like marking. Ask the children about the books. How often do they mark? How often do you find teachers? They're marking very, very strictly, and yet the children never have time to read what the comments are. They never have time to reflect on it. So, what was the point of the marking? Let's see how often they mark. Let's check with the children. Do you read the comments? Has that teacher's marking made a difference to your learning? 
Next few points. Spend some time with the principal. If the principal is too busy to spend time with you or with special parents, I think they've got their priorities wrong. So every parent that comes to Windows spends as much time as they want me. I was with parents for two hours. One set of parents two hours early in the week. I'm more than happy to spend my time with them. Find out what the care of these principles, principles are. See what he or she is on the Make sure it matches what you do. Can you see evidence of that principle's standards, manners, needs of throughout the school? Here's the evidence. Have a look at the wall displays. Have a look at the interactions of the children. To me, manners and standards count for everything. Please and thank you. Holding the doors open. Waiting your turn. Hugely important values. Are they embodied by the staff? This next one is one of my favourite questions. Does the school have stable leadership? How long has the principal been there? What are the principal's plans? Schools need stability. It needs principals who are there for a while and they get their ethos through the school, through their children. Talk to the other staff. Speak to principal's PA. All of the other staff. Admissions, secretarial, TAs, everybody. Talk to them. Because you are probably going to have contact with them first and foremost. So are these people, people that you think you could work with? Are these people that you could imagine your child being involved with? Next thing, a bit of introspection. Think about what's important to you. Think about your family values. Think about your educational values. Do you believe the school is a match for them? If not, there's a mismatch. You're going to be unhappy in that school. So make sure that there's a match between what your values are and the values of the school. One example, particularly at Windows, is we very much enjoy the fact that our pupils are Egyptian and they speak Arabic. And we have the Egyptian culture soaked throughout the school. These are our values. See if they match yours. What separates us from the rest? We follow an international primary programme designed for international students. We've got international staff. And we employ local staff for important subjects like Arabic and French and sports. All of our teaching staff are international. Our pupils follow their own learning path. We don't force anybody to learn. We let children take their own path. We encourage them and we put learning opportunities in their way. Next thing is resources for all. At this time, yes, it is hard getting resources into Egypt, but we manage it. You can when you've got a big work network about GEMS. And this is us. GEMS has been going for an awfully long time. Our mission is to be the world's leading provider of quality education. And we do that already. Undoubtedly, the biggest provider. How are we going to do it? Well, we work across the international sector, we work in the private sector, we work in the state sector, we work with governments on their curricula, we work around the world. We make sure that we have influence in your child's future. This is us. We've got a huge network of schools. In our schools, in 151 countries, we've got over 140,000 pupils. No other school can say that. We're also the biggest employer of British teachers outside of Britain. Gems. This is all we offer our staff. We cover the whole world. So if your child is in a gem school, and you get relocated, States or to Dubai or any of the other Emirates, Switzerland, your child can transfer. The schools talk to each other. Makes life easier for you mobile parents. Beyond that, we've got other experts. You look at our building in Windows, an absolutely stunning building. It's been designed with children in mind. It's not some warehouse that's been converted or a house or villa that's been converted. It's been designed for children. It's been designed for learners. We've got fantastic architects that work with us day in, day out. Right now we're deciding our grounds for our new building that's on our site. We're going to have three Astros built and put them in a particular place to take advantage of the landscape we have. I take advice from the best people in the world. Our pupils go to the best universities. This is where you should be looking. Even if you've got a foundation stage child, this is what you've got to be thinking about. Your investment is in your children. The ultimate goal is going to be university. There's some great universities in Cairo, no question. Alex University provides the world with some fantastic doctors and dentists and some great engineers. But also, a lot of parents nowadays are looking at international universities. Recently, I was speaking to parents with children in London. 
the College of Fire Intelligence University will come back each year. This is what we're heading for our children. Beyond that, we want our children to have intrinsic values. We want them to be active, dynamic humans. We want them to realise they're part of the world community. We want them to realise that they have got values that will stand them in good stead for life. We want to make sure they can lead, but they can also be followed. We want to make sure they think about the future. In our school, there's a huge investment in technology, and we're actually going to open up even further with my pupils to bring their own devices into school in the future. Beyond this, we have to say that a gender people stands apart from the rest of the world. You can spot a gender people for a mile off. And one thing is think about others. Part of the Gem Foundation, we have an ambition. Every single pupil in our school helps us to educate and have an influence on the education of a hundred other pupils around the world. We've given uniforms to school in China, the Middle East, and in Africa. We send teachers into schools in Africa to go and help with leadership. We build schools. We give you our part for the rest of the world. It's not just about you and your child, it's about other children elsewhere. We have a huge philanthropic arm. We do a lot for other children around the world. Thank you for your time.